Hello and welcome. My name is Morgan Ritchie Baum. I'm the business and nonprofit librarian here with Greensboro Public Library. And with the weather turning warmer and the days getting longer, our thoughts have turned to the great outdoors and all the promise that lies in our gardens. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to highlight Greensboro's own garden and plant stores. And today I am so excited to be joined by Christina Larson, who is the owner of Guilford Garden Center. Christina, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you, Maria. It's truly my pleasure. Awesome. So Christina, let's start off by just telling us all about Guilford Garden Center. Sure. So the Garden Center has been here in the Guilford College neighborhood since 1963. You can see it right there on my shirt. And um, we're proud to remain independent, small business. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of knowledgeable folks, friendly, um, great plants, as you can see behind me. But really, I think what makes the difference is, you know, there's somebody you can ask about all your gardening questions about what plants meet your needs. Um, we really pride ourselves on having a lot of natives you know, things that are appropriate for our area and good for the environment and um, a ton, a ton of variety. So it's always interesting to just kind of bounce around and see what's new. And uh, you can tell that we love plants and we love the people who love plants. So hopefully that, that comes through and that shows and you feel it and you see it everywhere you turn at Guilford Garden Center. That's awesome. So what, I obviously can tell you have so much passion for this. So what inspired you to go into business? Yeah, so, I mean, I was a hobby gardener like you and, um, you know, really decided to get more serious about it like 10 years or so ago, um, took a few classes, decided to go ahead and become a master gardener, which was a fantastic experience. Um, it's like taking a college course in horticulture every single week. And so, you know, all this information comes at you like a fire hose, but you don't have to remember it all. The main thing you learn as a master gardener is that you will never master gardening that you know where you can go to get the information and you always seek research-based information. So if you're doing a Google search, for example, don't just look at the first thing that comes up. Make sure you're looking for a university or a botanical garden uh, that you know really has the correct information for you. And if you can get one close to home, like NC State University or Clemson or Virginia Tech, those are great. Um, J.C. Ralston Arboretum in Raleigh, um, you know, our own Greensboro Beautiful. I mean, we've got so many amazing horticultural resources right here in North Carolina and in the Piedmont in particular. Um, so, you know, just ask one of us, any of the master gardeners, there's, you know, 150 or so of us at any given time. And uh, that's what we do. We learn how to give you great advice that hopefully keeps you wanting to learn. Um, so that's kind of where it started for me. The more I learned, the more I wanted to learn. Um, there's no experience like hands-on. You know, I hear a lot of people saying, um, oh, I have a black thumb. Well, that's just silly. Um, you know, what is it that makes plants grow? Sunlight, water, and soil, right? So as long as you understand those three principles and what each plant needs in order to thrive, you're gonna be just fine. The main thing that most of us don't do is work on our soil. So we preach that all the time here at the Garden Center. And, um, to continue my story, I actually retired from almost 40 years in the restaurant business. And I had this passion for gardening just, you know, boiling inside of me. And the garden center went up for sale the very next month after I retired. So I knew that the former owner had been getting close to thinking about retirement. It just really, you know, fell in my lap. It just happened to work out that I was free at the time that it went up for sale. So we've had a lot of fun with it. You know, we've, um, made sure that uh, we categorize things properly, that you know, people understand what to plant now, you know, when you can plant certain things and when you shouldn't plant certain things. And uh, we definitely steer people away from invasive plants. That's huge. You know, right here in Greensboro, we've got so many neighborhoods that are overrun with things like English ivy, which is beautiful and functional. It does serve the purpose that it's you know, used for, but it also gets away from us at some point. We all think we're going to keep it under control, but it doesn't. It's, you know, it goes where it wants to go. Um, and the real problem with non-native invasive plants is that they displace our native plants that are good for our wildlife, our birds, our bees, our butterflies, um, you know, even deer and squirrel, you know, they have to eat. So um, providing them the, the foods they naturally need uh, and not these, you know, crazy Asian things that aren't you know, providing them anything. It's, it's beautiful to look at and 
you know, right here behind me, I've got a, a great example of Carolina jessamine, which is a native vine, um, Gelsemium sempervirens. And uh, you can see it's blooming now. At my house, it blooms twice a year, really fully. Um, but then it gives me a smattering through the summer as well. So spring and fall, I know I can count on this plant to um, bring that you know beautiful sunny disposition in. And uh, it's also an evergreen vine, which there aren't many of those. Uh, but then we also have this crazy little spider's web fatsia right here. And this is just where I happen to sit down. It doesn't mean that I you know handpick these plants to talk about. But that's sort of the idea is I could just sit here and just you know riff off on any of these things at any given time. Um, and the things that I'm not super familiar with because I haven't grown them, somebody on my staff is. So there's always somebody nearby that you know you can count on for great advice. Categorization resources. You're speaking to my librarian heart and my gardener's heart all at the same time. So that's so wonderful. So. So many people, you know, reports are showing that so many people are getting into gardening because we're spending more time at home because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and we've all, we also know that COVID-19 has really impacted our local economy, especially our small businesses. So can you let us know what has the pandemic been like for you, for your business? What are some of the changes you've had to make um, and how is it going to impact your business going forward? Great question, Morgan. You know, the, the old saying, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Here's the deal. I was um, in denial that we could ever have an online store. I said, oh, no, we're too small a business. We don't have time. It would be too complicated, too expensive, blah, blah, blah. I kept saying that until we did it. And we had to do it because curbside pickup and local delivery are here to stay, right? So if people can browse plants at home, you know, click on the pictures, look at the descriptions, figure out what makes sense, um, either purchase those online for, for curbside pickup or just print out that shopping cart and bring it in and, you know, look at the plants in person. I know I like to actually look at my plants because sometimes online, you know, I, I check out the competition. I see what everybody's doing and I'll be like, oh, that's a good price. Wait, no, that's tiny. That's not a good price for that size. So, you know, we try to make sure that everything's a good value and, uh, Healthy plants are always a great value. How y'all doing? And um, yeah, so the, the online store has been huge for us. Um, it helps people just, you know, check availability if nothing else. So you don't have to make that call, wait for us to run out to go look at the lot and see what's there. Um, you know, you could also do a, uh, like a wish list. Um, what do you call it? Like a, a registry, you know, hey, give me these. I love them, you know? So <laughs> that's been good. Um, and, and the other thing that it's taught us is to make sure we stay connected with those new gardeners, because, you know, if folks tried, say, vegetable gardening last year for the first time and maybe had some success, you know, or maybe until the, the bugs came in and, you know, July, as they always will, and then it gets discouraging, right? So you're like, oh, hang on, I can just go to the farmer's market and get my local produce there. Well, maybe if we tweak the soil or we plant that crop a little earlier to be finished before the bugs come in. You know, those are the sorts of things that we can kind of help refine, you know, folks on their second or third year of uh, vegetables, fruits, any kind of edibles. Um, and then, you know, the difference between perennials and annuals, I think is one of the perennial questions, if you will. Um, you know, people always want to know, will it come back? And so just improving our signage. Um, I'm looking out now uh, in the, sun perennials area and we've got several signs out there that say perennials so you know it comes back every year so i think that helps people feel more comfortable that hey this plant that i'm buying you know maybe 20 bucks but guess what i'm gonna have it for the rest of my life or as long as i live there right um as opposed to an annual which is fine too it's it's gonna bring you a great pop of color but it's gonna do everything it does in one season and then you don't have it you know after the cold weather returns so um, I think there's room for both, honestly. I didn't used to be that way with annuals. I was kind of like, oh, I want to spend my money once and not have to replant every year. But uh, now I'm sort of more balanced, you know. That's awesome. So for somebody who's thinking about starting a business or maybe they just started their business and this is a crazy time to start your business, of course, do you have any advice for a new business owner or somebody who's interested in starting a business? For sure, I think the main thing is um, talk to as many people as you can that have already done it. Get their perspective. It may not be 
you know, advice that you agree with, but at least you sort of begin to understand the forces in the marketplace. Um, it turns out that one of the uh, advisors I talked to is now a competitor. So I know how he thinks, uh, which is all good, you know. Uh, we all have to think about the same pressures in business, but um, I'm very much uh, an optimist and I look at, you know, what is possible and then try to figure out how to get there. And uh, sometimes that's effective and sometimes uh, it can be a challenge, but you know, I just, that's my life philosophy and that's, that's who I am and that's how the business is rolling forward. So uh, we hope that folks um, see and feel that optimism. Um, you know, certainly right now we could all use a little more color in our lives. So flowers help us feel happy when we, you know, pull in the driveway or go out on our deck or balcony and uh, just our green spaces, being able to connect with green spaces, I think is very calming. And um, so if you don't have a green space that you currently love, you can create one, whether you're, you know, in a urban dwelling with a very limited amount of space, you go indoors with your house plants, go out on the balcony in the nice weather and, um, you know, figure out what will survive there in the light that you have. Um, if you have a little bit bigger um, area, you can design something a little bit uh, more involved. But, you know, the main thing is to sort of be intentional about it and uh, don't be afraid to fail. Sometimes that's the easiest way to learn is to fail, you know, to, to you know, break something or kill something. And then, you know what, I figure out how not to overwater it the next time. And I am an overwaterer. I will tell you that when it comes to houseplants, especially, um, I figure water equals love, right? So <laughs> um, not so much with some plants. You have to be a little careful. Um, so I'm able to help people from the perspective of, hey, I've killed that. So let me tell you how not to kill it. Um, you know, things always look great when they're at the garden center, right? They're fresh in from the grower and we do some of our own growing, um, but mostly we buy from quality growers around the Piedmont and around the state. And so when things arrive, man, they are in peak condition. And I will tell your viewers, this is a secret now, but plants come into garden centers mostly Tuesday through Thursday, okay? We see what sells over the weekend. We place our orders on Monday. Trucks come rolling in Tuesday through Thursday. So if you wait till Saturday to shop, you know, you may be already missing out on some of the freshest stuff that um, you may, may have wanted five of something and we only have three left. Um, we, we try to predict what is going to be popular, but some years it's just unpredictable. Whatever is published in the latest magazine, whether it be O. Henry or Our State or the News and Record, even 1808, um, you know, Southern Living, people read these magazines and then they come in and they go, hey, do you have this weird little purple variegated thing that has, you know, yellow and green striped flowers? what what is that i never heard of it you know nobody's growing it so um my point is we have fun trying to source things that we've never heard of we do really hustle to find plants and special order them for folks um you know we'll go as far away as oregon for a lot of our plants if we have to some things just grow better out there but um you know if we can keep things local and provide local jobs. Um, I think that's really important. So we know who grows what really well. And you can bet that all of our azaleas are grown right here in Brown Summit. Um, most of our trees are from uh, Forsyth County all the way to Wake County. Um, you know, we'll go a little further out for some specialty things, but you know, it's, it's a local game and uh, local business should be loyal to other local businesses. I love that. And Tuesday through Thursday uh, is now like emblazoned <laughs> in my brain. <laughs> I you love it. Out front unloading, you need to pull in. <laughs> I get it. I'm there. <laughs> so you've already dropped so many amazing knowledge bombs <laughs> throughout this interview. So I wonder, you know, looking to uh, this season, this upcoming growing season, which we're starting right now, um, what are you most excited about? What's got you excited for the garden? What advice do you have for new gardeners, maybe even new houseplant parents? Lay it on us. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I would say is um, when you're looking and evaluating a plant's potential and its value, 
um, think about it in terms of the long term. You know, if you're buying a plant that, let's say, it's a, a five gallon rhododendron, I don't know, and you've got that special space in your yard that you think, hey, this is going to anchor that space. It's going to be beautiful. But then you look at the price tag and it's like, I don't know, $60. I'm just making a number up. But how much does it cost when you, you know, have like a dinner out for two with a little wine or a cocktail, or a couple beers or something? I mean, you have nothing the next day except your memories of that dinner. This plant you're going to have forever if you treat it right. So, you know, value in plants, I think, is um, it's very underrated. Um, folks don't look at what it took to create that masterpiece. How many years has that been growing in that pot or in smaller pots on its way to that pot? Um, you know, who are the people behind it that are feeding their families? Um, it's a very competitive business, you know, grocery stores, and, you know, Walmart and, and the big box retailers, they've got plants. I go there just to look at them. I, if I'm going to buy plumbing supplies, I will, you know, take a, a lap through the garden center to see what's up. And I see, you know, dry, desiccated, um, or sometimes the opposite, overwatered. Um, I don't see anybody to talk to and ask questions of. And, um, you know, if you're just picking up a flat of pansies that just came off the truck from them, go for it. You know, it's convenient. But if you really want to talk about, you know, quality plants and the people who know them and can advise you on what will work well in your specific situation, um, think about the value that's behind that and come into you know, a small local business. Awesome. All right, so I, you've got me so excited to get out and get into my garden. So where can we find out more about you and Guilford Garden Center? Sure, um, go to guilfordgardencenter.com and there you'll see my blog. Uh, we have uh, a really cool little feature, a yard of the month. Um, it's only in 27410, which is our zip code because that's all we can handle right now. We just can't go everywhere and, you know, look at everybody's yard. So we're starting as local as local can be just in our own zip code. And anybody can be nominated for that. It can be the homeowner who nominates themselves. It can be a neighbor, a friend, a family member, um, anybody, you know, we'll come out, we'll, we'll evaluate, you know, what's unique and special and we'll tell the story. Um, we don't do it much in the winter because there's not a lot of uh, winter interest plants out there that people are really excited to show off. Um, I could show you some, but anyway, uh, it's mostly so far been a growing season phenomenon. So there at guilfordgardencenter.com, you can see the blog, you can see the online store, kind of click through all of that. We've got everything categorized by like, you know, gardening for birds or um, deer resistant, um, attracting butterflies, um, shade, sun, foundation, privacy, all the things that you know, people are sort of seeking seeking out. If you need something for privacy, you pretty much want a big plant, right? You want a row of them. So, hey, these are all the ones that can work in that situation. Do not plant a row of same. I'm going to tell you right now, that's boring. Row of same is out, okay? We alternate. We do two or three of something, two or three of something. Make it interesting. Combine your textures. Have fun with it. That's on the blog, too. <laughs> Oh, Christina, thank you so much for sharing your story, for sharing this great information with um, our community. Uh, we look forward to checking out Guilford Garden Center real soon. Outstanding. Thank you, Morgan. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you.